So Iceland is a different planet altogether. It's rugged, unexplored and breathtaking. If you're someone who is watching this video or going to Iceland for the first time or planning for your Iceland road trip, this video is going to cover all the details for you. So first, talking about the visa, for the visa, Iceland is a part of Schengen, the EU visa, so you need to fill the form in Denmark Embassy and apply in the same Denmark Embassy only. And about the visa cost, it costs like 6,700 or 8,000 rupees for the EU visa, takes like 15 to 20 days to come, but yeah, you need to apply for the visa right ahead of time and try not to book your tickets or hotels. Use the agent, ask him to get everything done like insurance, fake tickets, fake air tickets, fake hotel bookings and use that for your visa application. Of course it's not fake, they just do it and hold it, get the print out and again cancel it. They have that provision, they can easily do it, so use the agent, get it done, it's easier that way. And about the flights, you have got like two or three options. If you want to fly from Delhi, you have got the WOW Air which is flying from Delhi to Reykjavik like in a weekly Two flights that cost like 50, 55,000 including the baggage and if you want to fly with KLM Airways, they have got like two routes. Uh, KLM goes from Delhi to Amsterdam, then Amsterdam to Reykjavik, which the same flight which I had taken when I had gone to Iceland like last year. And there is one more flight that is Delhi to Copenhagen, then Copenhagen to Reykjavik. This costs like 60 to 65,000. Wow Air costs like 50 to 55,000, but Wow Air is again a budget airlines while KLM is really high end. For the hotels, book your hotels, pre-book your hotels much before time, maybe like seven months before time, seven or eight months before your flying dates because in Iceland the hotels are really expensive and you don't have to book the hotels. There are not much hotels in Iceland and whichever are there they cost like 50,000, 30,000, 40,000 a night which is crazy expensive. You don't want to spend like 40, 50k for a night staying in Iceland which is like a no man's land. Just go for and look for guest houses, family owned houses, they cost like 10,000 a night or 12,000 a night. But yeah, you have to pre-book them maybe 5 or 6 months ahead of your trip dates. So get the guest houses, get the Airbnbs, get anything like Agoda homes but don't go for the hotels because hotels are super expensive and you don't want to spend that kind of money on hotels. Guest houses are absolutely nice, if you had seen my Iceland videos, I had done some guest house tours in my videos they are nice cheap like 10 12 thousand a night still not cheap but yeah that's the kind of cheapness for iceland when it comes to hotels per night pricing just a pro tip book the hotels which has got like free cancellation do not book the hotels which are non-refundable because iceland weather is super unpredictable you don't want to get stranded at a place and then get your hotels night wasted so just go ahead and book the hotels which has got free cancellation and here is another pro tip if you have got the hotels booked and the free cancellation period is over and you are not able to drive to the second location what you can do is you can email to the property send them your details about the weather report or the road report anything that short and Icelandic people are really good they go ahead and refund the complete money I had already done it I had applied for three I mean for me three days were cyclonic storms and I could not drive so I had emailed to three properties, two of them refunded, just went ahead and refunded immediately. The third guy did not refund, that's fine. Driving license. For Iceland, if you have an Indian driving license in English, it's completely accepted. You don't need to go ahead and apply for the international driving license. Indian license is absolutely accepted all over Iceland for all of the car rental companies. Now talking about the fuel, fuel is expensive in Iceland but it is not as expensive as in India. Like in India it's close to like 70-75 per litre for petrol and in Iceland it's somewhere like um, I guess 70, almost 70. So fuel costs are almost the same as India so you are not going to fill the pinch of expensive fuel or something. So fuel prices pretty much set. Talking about the roads, the roads are really narrow in Iceland. You don't want to be driving really fast so don't keep a timetable of driving like 200 kilometers in a day try to keep it as low as possible drive between 150 kilometers within 200 kilometers because 
driving takes time and the weather is super unpredictable like in a kilometer it will be completely sunny after a kilometer it will be raining crazy so you don't want to be driving all day and Iceland is so 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 breathtaking you have to be stopping like in each five minutes to take pictures videos everything so keep like 150 200 kilometers a day drive start the drive early keep on stopping taking your pictures and whatever you need and just read the spot don't drive fast because the roads are narrow and the speed limit is not much and driving on iceland is on the left side almost same like us in india we drive on the right side for iceland we drive on the left side and talking about the car rental in iceland it's expensive per day it costs like 70 to 80 dollars or even up to like 100 dollars per day for car rental there are a lot of car rental companies like budget enterprise thrifty alamo avis and so almost all the companies are there but they cost a lot as compared to the US or Australia so be prepared to spend more on the car rental part and try to get all of those insurance add-ons from your car rental company because in Iceland weather is tricky weather is unpredictable roads are tricky you don't want to be spending a lot while returning back your car so try to get almost all the add-ons like ash accident collision Almost all the add-ons, whichever the car rental company is recommending, go ahead and get all of those insurance add-ons and try to be safe with the car and drive slow. And while renting the car, try to get a 4x4. Do not get those small cars because many of the Icelandic roads are highlands or not properly paved roads. So you have to have a 4x4 if you are really driving long routes in Iceland. Now talking about the currency, Icelandic currency is named as Icelandic Krona which is like 1000 Krona is $10 and you don't want to carry a lot of cash while going to Iceland because almost every store, every fuel station, every restaurant accepts credit card, debit cards, anything you have, don't need to carry cash to Iceland at all. Now talking about the language, everyone in Iceland speaks fluent English so you are not going to have any kind of language or communication problems. Everyone speaks, everyone understands, English is pretty clear all over Iceland. Now talking about the drones, maybe Iceland is the best country in the world where you can fly your drone unlimited. Day and night, night and day you can fly your drones anywhere you want except those few spots anyways. They have got no one looking after you so just go ahead and fly your drone just stay safe now what to carry while going to iceland or planning a trip to iceland you have to pay attention to what you are packing you need to have a lot of layers cold dresses sweaters hiking boots hiking jacket full jackets half jackets inner liners inner layers thermals caps binnies rainwear i mean in my bag almost everything of this short was somewhere around 20 kilos and my rest kapada was less than 10 kilos so you have to have a lot of inner liners thermals beanies and rainwear have to be packed while going to iceland now when to travel the best time to travel iceland is in between june july august not even september june july august are the most peak summer time for iceland Temperature stays somewhere around 20 degrees or 18 degrees. It's pretty cool again, but yeah, that is what the summer looks like in Iceland. And it gets really tough to go ahead and plan your trip for June, July, August because almost whole world goes to Iceland in June, July. So it's kind of really crowded. So you have to have all of your bookings, tickets, flights, hotels. Everything has to be pre-booked if you are planning to go in June or July. Peak summer in Iceland is going to be sick. And talking about the internet, internet in Iceland works absolutely nice. You have got like three or four options for the 4G like Simin, Nova, Vodafone. They cost like 50, uh, 3,500 rupees for 50 GB. Like, it's like 50, 60 dollars for 50 GB. Fair enough and it works really nice all over Iceland. And many of those car rental companies are going to have the 4G LTE add-on in their car. So you don't need to spend extra for your SIM card 4G. Go ahead and book a car, get the add-on for the 4G and you are going to have internet all over the island while driving. Now talking about the food, if you are in Iceland, be prepared to spend more on your food and drinks. Just to give you an example, one mango shake, 500 ml of water, one chicken sandwich costs like 2000 rupees and for 6 bananas it costs like 1500 rupees that is crazy expensive now water water costs a lot in iceland in fact in iceland you can drink the tap water directly from any of the hotel motel guest house or farmhouse 
directly you can drink the water. It's absolutely fine and safe because the water is coming from the glacier and it's perfectly clean. So you can have the water from anywhere, any tap while in Iceland. You don't need to be spending thousands and thousands of rupees buying the water all the time. Now what to see in Iceland? If you are planning for your first trip to Iceland, I would suggest to just go ahead and do the South Iceland road trip or South Island trip. That starts from Reykjavik till Vik and then get back from Vik to Reykjavik. It will spend like 8 or 10 days for this trip and you are going to absolutely love it and get time to appreciate the real beauty of Iceland. And talking about the local transportation in Reykjavik, there are just taxis, private taxis, there is no Uber, Ola, Lyft. Private taxis and just to give you an example, for 6 km ride, I had paid somewhere around 1700 rupees. For 6 km, same in India, we would be paying somewhere around 200 rupees or maybe 150. But in Iceland, it costs like 1700 rupees just for 6 kilometers. So you can, I mean, estimate what kind of expensive country Iceland is. The last point, be safe. Iceland is a dangerous country. It has got a lot of things to see. The weather is unpredictable, roads are unpredictable, glaciers are unpredictable. Like snow, rain, sun, you can see everything within 15 minutes. So it's a dangerous country. You have to be safe. Drive safe, plan safe, try to get your friends together, don't travel solo like me. You might get into any kind of danger I don't want to be in, so just be safe. So those are the 15 tips I wanted you to know if you are planning your first trip to Iceland. If you have got any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. Smash the subscribe button if you haven't done it yet and don't forget to click on the bell icon to stay updated. I will see you in the next video.